So moving forward, I'll uh, show you a little bit more about how to edit your actions using our system volume command. Um, actually, let's put that in the bin for now, that whole group, and create a new group for testing. And call it more payloads. And I'm going to create a command that allows us to do a little um, dictation on the fly so that we can, wherever we are, if we have a text box or a document, we want to quickly insert some text with a voice command. We can do that using a dictation payload. So I'm just going to call this uh, type dictation. And I'm going to create a phrase type. And then I'm going to add the payload dictation regular. What this does is allows us to speak basically for as long as we want. When it detects a pause in our speaking, it'll stop. And whatever we said will be returned as the payload. Now it's important to keep in mind that with payload dictation, if you don't have a great mic or if you haven't done training, it, there's a good chance that it won't get what you're seeing exactly right. Uh, our other commands, you'll get much better confidence because we're de defining exactly what you can say. With a payload dictation, you could say anything in, in the given language that you're using. So we're using an English speech recognition engine engine right now so we'll be able to say any, almost anything in the English language but it will probably come up with lots of alternate uh, it may spell words wrong etc so it's it, it's not as reliable as the other types of commands that we use still it's extremely flexible so we could use it not only to type but we could do a, a Google search we could create a YouTube search we could make a command specifically for searching Wikipedia and so on and this allows us to uh, enter any any kind of English language string that we want. We can also use uh, spelling and uh, if I double click it'll toggle to spelling which allows us to actually spell out letters. So our command uh, input is defined in terms of this phrase that triggers the command and then our payload uh, dictation we need to make it do something. So I'll double click this and I'll add an action. And in this case I want to use keyboard emulation. We currently have three different methods of using keyboard emulation. Um, the simplest one to use is send keys. The reason we have three methods is that send keys doesn't always work. Uh, for example if you're playing video games we have a special plugin for DirectX input that works with most video games when send keys does not. If we know the command we can just type it in no problem but it, maybe we don't know what the command is and we want to go looking so what we can do in that case is we can click on the magic wand here and that's gonna let us select from a tree that contains all of our possible commands. And in addition to listing all of the commands in their groups, we'll get more information in terms of a description of the command and the various parameters that are expected. So for example, we've already used some simple ones like Vox on, off, and standby. Let's say I select on. We have a little description here and it indicates that there are no parameters required. Now let's say we go to the OSD commands that we've also used, show text command. You'll see here that it requires a parameter which is the message to display. And then we have some optional parameters and they have descriptions as well. Now we wanted to do uh, keyboard emulation. So we have here is just the simple command send keys. And we can get a description here. 
You can get more information about how to use send keys if you want to do more complex things uh, other than just typing text. If you want to do c control or shift or alt key or press the home key and whatnot, you can go to this address to get more information. I'm going to select and it puts send keys in here. Now when we're editing a command in in the logical command builder it's designed around sort of seeing your whole command at once but if you want you can actually click here and go into the parameter helper which gives you a a view of just this one action and whatever parameters are required and some useful tools for example if you wanted to insert payload one without having to type it maybe you wanted to put a carriage return afterward afterwards and various other things you know, ways to to find a file path and so on so let's just go with parameter one here click OK so in this case we're gonna say the word type followed by our dictation and send keys is going to regurgitate our payload. And we'll do a test. And I will uh, save all. Don't save the bin file. And I'm going to open up Notepad. Type hello there. Type period type how are you type question mark uh, that last one didn't work because I'm running this in trial mode so after 25 voice commands you have to close the program and restart so that's no problem so I'll close it and launch it again okay so let's just beef this command up a little bit more let's say if I don't have the notepad window focused it's the text is gonna get sent to something else so if I wanna make sure that notepad is focused I can go into my macro builder and I can edit my command and add an action before send keys that focuses the notepad window so this is just one of the many things that we have, one of the many actions that we have now. And the list keeps growing. And it happens to be under Window, Window Focus. And if we're not sure how to use this action, we have a description here. And you'll notice that it says that it's expecting the process name. So I'm going to click Select. So what we need to enter, enter here is the process name, which is Notepad. Now, if you're not sure what the process name is, you can use the Task Manager. Uh, you can right-click on the desk on your task bar and choose Task Manager, or you can hit Control Shift Escape. And here you'll see a list of everything, but we have Notepad.exe. So you don't need to put the .exe in the end. What will happen then is it will bring this notepad window to the front and give it focus and then it will send the keys. And now I could also modify this a bit and put that carriage return afterwards so that I can get each thing I say automatically gets put onto a new line. So you'll notice that Notepad does not have the focus when I'm starting this. I'm, I'm, I'm focusing the Vox Commando window. Type, hey there. Type, what's up? Type, see you tomorrow.
So that's pretty cool. The the dictation is working very well because I'm wearing a headset. If you're using an open microphone and you've got other sounds going on, you're not going to see such good results with the dictation. But you should hopefully still be able to do other uh, commands that are more clearly defined. I'll show you quickly the new variation that we have, which is um, the payload dictation and spelling type. So I'm going to keep my original command. I want to create a copy of it. I can right click and choose clone. And now I'll modify this one. Give it a new name. Very important that I change this phrase because now if I say type it won't know which which command I'm talking about. I have to use a different phrase to trigger this command. Now I could either delete this and then insert spelling dictation. Or, as I mentioned before, you can double click to toggle it between regular and spelling. Click, 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 click. And now I'll demonstrate going back and forth between the type command and the spell command. And you'll notice that it's the way I have it set up right now, it's automatically detecting when I've made changes in the editor. And it's initiating a rebuild and restart automatically. If that doesn't happen for some reason, uh, you, can do, you can tell it to build missing grammars and then do a quick restart. And in the case that if something is re really weird is going on, usually because you've, you've copied a file over, let's say you copied a voice commands from a different install over and things aren't acting the way you expect, you can do a purge cache and then you'll be sure that everything gets cleaned up after that. Do a purge cache and a quick restart. But most of the time when you're, if you edit phrases in the editor, let's say I, I'll change this phrase to spell out. You'll see when I save and close it that it's going to detect and rebuild automatically. Now if you just edit a command, uh, if you just edit the actions of a command currently it won't detect that there's a change. In that case it's only necessary for you to do a quick restart. A quick restart will always reload all of your actions. Spell out ABC. Spell out A, B, C. Spell out A as in apple, B as in bob, C as in cucumber. Type. That worked better. Ignore me. So that's a nice thing about the spelling dictation. If you're having problems, you can use that A as an apple. And it doesn't ha you don't have to word use the word apple. You could say A is an atom, etc. It makes it much more likely to, to understand what it is that you're intending. You can also do um, some punctuation and whatnot. Type ampersand. Spell out ampersand. Spell out divided by. Spell out multiplied by. Spell out plus. Now I did that one on purpose. It recognized that we said spell out plus and it tried to do send keys spell out plus. But if you look at, if you follow the link that I mentioned earlier, send keys actually uses plus to uh, modify strings and make them uppercase. So for example, I could go and edit my command. Let me close this window. I can go and edit my type command, or let's say I clone it. And I want to make another command, uppercase type. 
can edit the action here and put a plus in front of my payload, what will happen is the words will probably, I'm actually not sure what will happen, it, it, it will probably capitalize the first letter only. I'm not an expert in send keys. uppercase type hello there. So it gave me a nice capital on my H. Now even though it's not it's not automatically putting the capital on the H in the when it detects the word hello it's because of the plus in front of hello. Now from what I recall of send keys oh and here I should really it's okay if my command name, if I have two commands with the same name, but it, it doesn't make as much sense when you're looking at the tree, so it's a good idea to make sure your command name is appropriate. I can edit this command. I think if I put brackets around the payload, it'll apply the shift modifier to the whole thing, so let's test that. In fact, again, rather than then restarting, I can test it here. And you can see that it's applied that plus modifier to the whole string because I put it in brackets. I'm not going to go any further with that. That's send keys and as as I mentioned before there's a, there's a link in the documentation that uh, can give you all the information you need on using send keys.